uh, I was a PhD student at the then Staffordshire, North Staffordshire Polytechnic, uh, doing stuff on organisational culture. And I went to a conference um, uh, called Redirections in Organisation Analysis, I think, at Lancaster, which had a whole bunch of um, uh, luminaries there, most of whom hadn't got a bloody clue who they were because uh, I'd only just started. And then uh, John came up to me and he just started a job at the University of Kiel, uh, just up the road from North Staffs, um, and seemed like a nice fella. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so we, had, we were chatting about various things. Um, I had been taught by David um, on a master's in qualitative sociology um, in 86, 88. Um, uh, and obviously he was, uh, you know, talking a lot about method at that time, uh, David. You might, you might, you, you might be, you, you mentioned in your, in your talk that you become a kind of method guru over the last 20 years. Well, I, my memory of that master's degree is that you were talking about method a hell of a lot then as well. Um, but we decided to organize this conference. And I think uh, in part, it was a way just to kind of work together and get drunk and have some fun and things. But it turned into quite an interesting event with a whole bunch of, of, of kind of luminaries there, um, sort of looking backwards and looking forwards in quite a similar kind of way. And of course, David was gracious enough to come and do a, a keynote uh, on throwing away ladders with the Wittgenstein reference and so on. Um, and a whole bunch of, um, well, quite interesting people, many of whom are, are on this call today. Do you want to say something about, about that, John? About the people? Yeah, that I mean, I, I met, uh, yeah, I met David about the same time. I, um, I was doing a postdoc at uh, London Business School and had to arrange the, uh, the seminar series. So I thought who would be great to, uh, to have along and, uh, and immediately thought of David who came over and who did an absolutely fantastic demolition job of some of the real, uh, the real shysters we had at the school who were more interested in consulting than, uh, than in research. And then uh, Martin and I met at the Lancaster thing and we thought, why don't we uh, celebrate uh, the 21st anniversary of David's, uh, David's book as sort of coming of age and uh, a taking stock. Or well, I think that was the real reason, wasn't it? I mean, the, no, the, the real reason was we're a couple of chiselers who just wanted to get on the back of the great and the good and, uh, and nick all their ideas and get a bit of publicity for ourselves. So we'll, Yeah, no, we'd, we'd never admit to that the, kind of thing. I, I guess it's also worth... Martin. Yeah, I was just thinking, I mean, for me, it's also kind of interesting that I do remember doing something on David's book when I was doing A-level sociology in presumably that must have been 1978 to 1980. So the book was having some influence. I'm not quite sure which textbook it was mentioned in because I was, you know, I guess I was being taught through things like Cockrove. This is before Harold Ambos and stuff. Um, but also I remember thinking that, you know, the, the sociology of organisations was the most boring bit of sociology. Um, and I couldn't imagine, you know, I was interested in culture and identity and politics and all that kind of stuff. So why on earth would I be interested in, in organisation theory? And the only bit that I remember enjoying vaguely was the kind of the interactionist -y bit that David's book was introducing into the sociology of organisations. So I guess there must have been something there for me about kind of rescuing that sense of excitement that I had um, about, about the area, about the possibilities of the area, something like that. Yeah, it was similar for me, Martin. I was doing, uh, as an undergraduate, organisational theory at, uh, or organisation studies at Lancaster. And, uh, and theory of, of, um, uh, of organisations was obviously a key text. So it seemed to be coming about 10 years after Kuhn's structural uh, 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 revolutions book and, uh, and led on to the paradigms book with, with Burrell and Morgan, etc. So it was sort of very formative for me. Um, but I remember thinking at the time, well, why doesn't anyone do any research on organisations? Because everyone seemed to be involved in this inter-Nicene inter warfare of, of paradigms and, and theory positions. And there didn't seem to be a lot of talk about actually getting in and, uh, and doing research on organisations. So very much a, a period of the theoretical uh, tumults. But uh, it's, it's other... worth saying something about your PhD in that context, isn't it? Because in a uh, sense, the structure of that echoes precisely the kind of theoretical war, theory wars that you yeah, and I yeah. came out of. Well, that's right. I mean, my, my, my PhD looking at uh, the UK fire service or a number of positions was, was obviously, um, you know, a theory of organisation was key to that, as was the, uh, the Burrell, and, uh, Burrell and Morgan book. Um, but uh, uh, looking back to the conference, I think uh, 
uh, as much of a, a stimulus for um, for what we were interested in was yes, it was 21 years since David's book, but also um, the big hot topic of the time was the rise of, uh, of postmodernity and trying to make sense of that in a theoretical sense, and that that if we were going to go for a new theory of organisations, how would we how would we fit that into the jigsaw puzzle? Okay, we could make stre- stre- sense of structural functionalism. We could we'd started to make sense of social action theory, the action frame of reference or what have you, but also how did, how did post-modernity and and relativism and relationism uh, fit into that jigsaw in terms of a, 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 of a new direction. So for a a moment of uh, seriousness, that was probably the main, the main reason that we, yeah, I guess it probably is. And I think that's the first time postmodernism has been mentioned in the, uh, in the call so far, hasn't it? But at the the time it was really important, particularly to me, I think, in which I was, I was desperately trying to look for interesting ways to connect organization theory to stuff. So I mentioned David's stuff, but, but, you know, particularly in terms of the kind of trendy French theory that (laughs) David was so so dismissive of of at the start, but, you know, papers by, um, I don't know if he's on this call, but Gibson Burrell and uh, Bob Cooper, who passed away a couple of years ago now. But, you know, these were kind of ways in which Foucault, Derrida, Habermas, various others were being introduced into organisation theory. And that idea of postmodernism as being a kind of whatever the strengths and weaknesses of the term or whatever it might be, but certainly a kind of an intellectual tumult in which a whole bunch of stuff was getting thrown in. And there was a, there was a kind of an excitement to that froth, I think. And I'm, I'm you know, that's, I'm fairly sure that the, the conference must have been, uh, well, quite a few papers were explicitly about postmodernism, but it was certainly informed by that kind of sense that the plate, the tectonic plates were shifting, that something new was emerging, you know, that, uh, uh, different ways of talking, thinking, acting, whatever, something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, the impression I got, you know, I mean, crack it's a hell of a long way back, and uh, I did a sort of uh, of an archival search. I, I, I don't kick anything out of the house, you know, I've got piles of garbage everywhere. So I thought I would have some original stuff back from the conference, you know, some of the leaflets and stuff, but I couldn't find it. So it's been a case of sort of. Um, trying to uh, just to you know, have some recollection of what, what went on. But I think um, my abiding feel that we were at a, a sort of position there where a lot of people, and, and I'm minded that actually a lot of people that presented at the conference are actually here today or at the meeting today, quite a few of them. I could, I could I just underline a few <clears throat> names. But a, a, a lot of people were continuing debates on agency power, uh, process class and what have you. But but also uh, a lot of new directions uh, were being signalled. And I'd, I'd like to think that, I mean, John Law's talk, for example, on the, I think it was on the second day on narrative, that was sort of throwing the seeds of actor network theory in an organisational context into the, uh, into the pot. Uh, R- Richard Whittington's talk on institutions and marrying that with, with David's work was so, sort of sowing the seeds for the strategy of practice position um some of the work on on um uh, on post structuralism was 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 bringing feminism into the uh into the uh into the pod as well so those were sort of some of the themes that if there's anything to take away from the conference i i, I thought those are some of the developmental themes that that came out of it there was a sense of moving forward and a, a, a need to make sense of that yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I mean, there's there's an awful lot in this conference, in this 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 one about time, isn't there? About the way in which our lives are punctuated by particular sorts of intellectual moments, and obviously for for the, for the the the, the Kiel the Kiel conference, the context of postmodernism, but I think also the context, and you know, mentioned this before, of the 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 rise and rise of the inexorable rise and rise of the business school, and the way in which certain versions of organization theory, analysis, studies, or whatever, are starting to become separated from a tradition of sociology that I was educated in. And I think that's really important in understanding the context. You know, I've made some comments about this before, but the idea that, that there's a there's a kind of an amnesia very often about much of the the kind of the classical tradition, if you like. And by classical tradition, I'm including people like Hoffman and Becker and all the rest of them 
in sociology, which is which is now endlessly being rather badly reinvented in a great deal of business re- business school research. And I suppose that conference, the, the 91 conference, is just on the kind of the cusp of that expansion, isn't it? You know, it's when, when business schools are starting to expand like balloons and sociology departments are basically in steady state or even losing numbers. You know, and personally, even though I was working in a sociology department at Staff, the then Staffordshire University by that point, there were no jobs there. And, you know, it, I, I was, I think, the youngest member of staff by probably 20 years, something like that. Um, and so when John offered me, well, it wasn't just John, but I was offered the opportunity to move up the hill to Kiel a couple of years later to a department of management that was expanding and lots of people talking about all sorts of interesting things. You know, sociology then starts to look like a rather, um, a rather moribund area, rather sadly. Uh, yeah, I mean, at the time, I remember uh, when I was trying to get a, a job uh, after the postdoc at LBS and just reading The Guardian on a Tuesday, there'd be absolutely precious few jobs in management theory, you, you know, another 15 years on and crikey, you know, there were like everyone who was coming out of doc work was, 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 getting, uh, was getting a job instantaneously. Yeah, um, I'd just like to, just going back to the business school, though, I, I, there's a sort of feeling, that sort of, you know, that, that organisation studies slides into the business school during the 70s. I'm a little bit minded that, that of course, you know, that organisation studies in one shape or form has, has, has always been part of the, uh, uh, of the business school. Um, I was thinking, um, the way I teach uh, students the sort of history of organisation studies, I guess, has two pivotal points. And the one is really the, the very last uh, chapters of Management and the Worker by Roethlisberger and Dixon, because the Hawthorne studies, of course, starts as a set of ergonomic studies. You know, that's what Elton Mayo did. And the company was doing ergonomic work before even Elton Mayo came in. But those last chapters where the Parsonian influence on uh, Rothlis and, uh, Roethlisberger in particular at Harvard really then shapes, I think, the, the discipline of organisations. And of course, it's Roethlisberger in uh, management and morale who, who gives the term organisational behaviour in, in due course. And mm. that sets the discipline on very much a structural functionalist or systems theory course uh, for, for several decades. And I think it's only when, um, when for me, David's book comes in and brings in a, 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 a social action frame that the second pivot Starts to starts to happen. The functionalist orthodoxy, as we used to call it, very much breaks up, and a, and a feeling of a plurality in theorizing sort of um, uh, starts from that um, point onwards. So I always think of, of organization studies as and somehow going back to Taylorism and the early days at Hawthorne and the classical school as sort of sort of if you want to use those terms pre paradigmatic then a hefty period of structural functionalist paradigmatic orthodoxy to the position we are now, which is sort of some sort of um, post, post-paradigmatic uh, diversity or pluralism with, with, uh, with, a, with a range of healthy uh, alternative perspectives. Well, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. In the same but, same yeah. Barbara, Barbara kindly mentioned my old uh, institution and uh, and Roberts as well, the University of Leicester. Mm. I mean, you know, we can talk about healthy post-paradigmatic pluralities, pluralism or something, but within the UK context, you're getting a hell of a lot of pushback on this kind of stuff now. At oh, Leicester, yeah. for those, those people who don't know, uh, 16 of my uh, friends and colleagues are being sacked because they teach critical management studies and political economy. And much of the kind of the understanding of the um, of the, the current Dean of Social Sciences at the University of Leicester is really about making sure that sociology, sociological perspectives, if you put it, um, uh, don't have a home within the business school because the business school is a place for presumably uh, vanilla stuff and fairy, tale, fairy tales, not you know, serious analysis of organisations. So, you know, again, going back to kind of David's... Um, uh, David's complaints at the start about um, exotic forms of theory and theorizing and journal publications and so on. Yeah, you know, I agree with that up to a point. And I agree with Dennis uh, Torish's um, uh, uh, venom up to a point. But we're seeing we're seeing a different kind of pushback at the moment. 
And it's partly driven by the kind of the institutional structures of British higher education, the, the need to sweat the assets and to make sure that your business school, your psychology department, your law school and so on are basically paying to keep the chemistry department open. And that has epistemological consequences. And I think we're going to see those working through over the next decade or so. Yeah, I think I think at Leicester, Martin, it's just been the most explicit case. Mm. Uh, Manchester, as you know, we lost um, 20 organisation theorists between since 2017. You know, they, they basically just um, uh, fled the... Uh, uh, an inquiry was raised as to whether this was an attack on uh, critical management studies, and uh, and Hugh Wilmot might want to to comment on that. Um, the university denied it, but um, yeah, the, still the situation where most of the people that left Manchester um, were doing research in that area. The irony is that they were just about the the most prolific publishers and grant getters and and high profile academics. The uh, the people in organisations division uh, actually uh, actually uh, have, mm. yeah. Uh, but at Leicester, in your case, it's just been far more explicit. You know, they actually named the areas. Yeah, that's right. And there is there we've, we've we've just jumped across a kind of slippage there, and it's worth it's worth pausing and mentioning it, which is of course the relationship between the sort of organisation theory that we're discussing here and something called critical management studies, whatever that might be. But I do think that however we might understand those connections, um, that critical management studies has been the kind of incubator for a whole bunch of different ways of thinking about organizations theory. Whatever we might think about their adequacy or their relationship to empirical data and so on, that that's been, that's been a place of considerable um, excitement and uh, the generation of ideas and perspectives. Um, and in the context of a, business, of, of a kind of business school system that, that really seems to want to teach a kind of global vanilla in order to flog it to the you know, Chinese bourgeoisie, um, that's, um, uh, that, that, that I think is something to be protected rather than slammed too hard. Do we want to say something about the, uh, just the last couple of words, Robert, if that's all right. I mean, one yeah, thing we were, conscious, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. We were looking at um, some of the, um, uh, the, the sort of the, the bits and pieces about the conference. I mean, one thing to note is just how few women there were there. I mean, I, I think the, we think the only two women who spoke, although we don't have the complete program, were Barbara and Pippa Carter. Um, I, don't, I don't know if anybody else on this call remembers, but, you know, that's uh, in terms of gender representation, that was pretty poor. Um, and the other, the, other, the other kind of interesting thing, I suppose, was I, gu I guess the way in which the, um, the, 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 the conference kind of punctuated a series of things. It almost kind of provided a one of those moments where you can kind of stop and assess, almost kind of pause time for a minute and assess the different influences of, um, of different, different currents of theory. And that was very much my experience of Kiel for, for, for a while, but it was a kind of um, an odd place in which, you know, we had, we organized conferences on actor network theory and on um, uh, the body, uh, something on, there was something on popular culture, wasn't there? A whole, whole kind of bunch of rather odd topics in which we brought people together to do some really interesting reassessment. And I just wanted to kind of triple underline that because I think what Robert's set up here is the possibility for doing something like that, yeah? For, for kind of um, uh, almost, I suppose, thinking about the intersections between our biographies and our institutions and the forms of theory that we, uh, th th theory in scare quotes that we, that we play with. I should say for the uh, we did have some theory balance though, didn't we? We had um, we did have one talk on structural functionalism or at least contingency theory. Uh, yes, that, that, for those people who remember Lex Donaldson, um, <laughs> who gave us a talk on telly that uh, that David was furious about, I think, because we were we were trying to usher everybody into a room and watch a video. <laughs> I, to, to, to my shame, John still thinks he's got a copy of Lex, Lex Donaldson's video. I have, um, I have. I, I, I don't think I ever watched it. <laughs> <laughs> so even if I have one, I don't know where it is now. Uh, have I we found have, the, uh, oh, go on, I then. found the, uh, um, talking to the theory of, uh, new theory of organisations book, I just saw Barbara reading it a few minutes ago. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I just found the, uh, the, the contract for it. We made a fortune. 
We did, yeah. I think we yeah. all the copies are, you know, have been shown this morning. But I was just thinking, was, you know, if you're if you're a true scientist, you you write your name properly, you know. And right. Parker just scribbles a line. Oh, that's terrible! Isn't isn't that it? awful. Now, that is a, that's the sign of a real shyster. Isn't yeah, it? that's right. It a was also. In, I haven't got that copy, but I've got the Routledge Revivals version of it. I like the idea of it being a revival. It sounds like a kind of zombie book. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, yeah, I got one of them. Yeah. Wow. David, we'll send you a copy. 